So what we're going to do is, I would like you to copy this create move multivals3 again and paste it so that we can see in this next example how to use the cursor for loop and how um, much it does code reduction. And then we're going to look at more than one variations of cursor for loop. So let's create this create or replace procedure move multivals4. We will going to keep that title variable in place because we still need to fetch a value out. But one of the benefits of cursor for loop is since it starts and keeps running till it runs out of values, you do not need to declare a counter variable. So that will going to be deleted. <coughs> the other good thing about cursor for loop is you do not need to declare a cursor, then open it and then run it through a loop. You can actually do all of these operations inside the cursor for loop. So this is how the syntax will going to now change. You're going to start out with for, this is your for loop, followed by your object, which will going to tap into a cursor as. And now get rid of the word declare. So this is the complete statement for v1, which is your variable, as cursor1, which is of type cursor, for, this is the SQL statement on which I want to write the cursor. Now what I want to do is, do, what? I don't need to open cursor, gone. Don't need to do repeat, gone. Do not need to have any fetch statement, gone. Insert into title values title var but now I need to fetch that title var what is the name of the field in the actual table title right so what I can do is I can literally say I want title var that every time it loops to go to the title field grab the value for the current record and then I'm going to use it on the next line no need to set, no need to check, no need to do anything except for end for. So your entire logic tremendously reduces. You don't have to worry about counters, you don't have to worry about fetching, you don't have to worry about opening a cursor, you do not have to declare cursor outside of the loop and then fetch it and then get into the loops. So all of that logic is get, getting dealt with inside the cursor for loop. So, so this closing the cursor also goes out the window. It does everything for you. So once you're done with this, you compile it, and then you call it. Get rid of the semicolon because you want the, everything to go on in a cycle.